Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Good evening, everyone. This is Crossbone Vanguard. I'm Dempster, and I'll be your host for today. Crossbone Radio Wave is a radio show dedicated to bringing you anything and everything Crossbone Vanguard and Card Fight Vanguard, including updates, announcements, and so on. Keep in mind that Crossbone Radio Wave is not an official radio show and is entirely inspired by Hibiki Radio's Radio Vanguard G and Radio Vanguard G Next. So, welcome to our first episode ever. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> I've really always wanted to do this but never gotten time to sit down and think about you know what I can come up with. But hey, here we are, finally! So... <laughs> With 2017 just beginning, I, I think it's uh, high time Crossbow Vanguard step out of the game and provide more content. And with the past few months, I'd say we've done quite a bit in terms of content creation, including this radio show. And uh, speaking of 2017, Happy New Year everyone! Even though it's like, um, well, already halfway into the January, but hey, better late than never, right? <laughs> so what do you guys do to celebrate New Year? Was it to go partying with your friends, spending time with your family or loved ones, or just sitting at home? Having a one-to-one -one date with a computer. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. But anyway, uh, well, I didn't go out with the rest of the people from Cosmo Vanguard because I was away in Malaysia. But of course, I had a lot of fun myself. Well, not myself as in on my own alone and stuff, but with people that, you know, are um, important to me. So, uh, well, where did I go? I went to Malacca, I guess. Yeah, I went to Malacca and I, I ate some of the, you know, the chicken rice ball there. Uh, it's really, really, really delicious. If you ever go to Malacca, you must try it out. I'm not too sure where exactly the place is, but um, well, if you can find it, I mean, it, I think it's everywhere, or you can just Google it uh, and, and find out the place for yourself, I guess. But uh, how they made the chicken rice ball is basically they took a chunk of chicken rice and then molded it into a very tight knit ball and uh, serve it in a plate of seven. So that plate itself is very, very filling. And of course, with the chicken that they, they made uh, within the, the, the place itself, it's oh, it's a match made in heaven. The, the, the sauce and, and the chicken itself is like, oh, you know, it all comes together like a perfect, uh, a perfect fit. And I know I mentioned, you know, I know I said a lot of balls, but come on, we're all we're all mature people, so I'm talking about the chicken rice balls. Don't think too much. <laughs> so enough of the balls. I well, I also went to this uh, small exhibition uh, for uh, it's like an upside down house. Uh, so everything in there was nailed shut to the ceiling uh, to give the, the illusion that everything is upside down and you are walking on the ceiling. So what you're supposed to do in there is to take pictures and then view them up upside down. So it looks like you are trying to um, trying to grab the furniture or, or whatsoever, and it makes for a very very weird but uh, exciting experience. Unfortunately, the place there is not very big. It's only like two rooms worth. So there really isn't much to to explore. So what I did was just walk around, take a few pictures, and uh, take a few repeats here and there, and then I'm just done in less than an hour. Oh, but enough about my trip to Malaysia. Uh, <laughs> well, it's the new year and a new beginning, so we're going to do this weekly as much as possible. And with that said, let's stand up the... No, you know what? That sounds very weird. So I'm going to do it in Japanese. Se no. Stand up Vanguard! Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in card fight Vanguard. This program is brought to you by Crossbone Vanguard. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Once again, this is Dempster, and good evening. So let's start with talking about the most recent episode for the anime Card Fight Vanguard G next. Turn 14, are you ready to fight? I, I, I don't know how to say the fight because it's an exclamation, but it's more of a question. So anyway, I digress. So now that uh, Chrono, Shion, and Tokoha's teams have actually made it to the under-20 tournament, this is where they start preparing for it by throwing a send-off party. Or so I thought, actually. But to me, this was more of a, a filler episode before the big event. Um, why a send-off party? Because uh, in Japanese tradition, the send-off is, uh, is like a party to, significant, uh, to signify the beginning of something new. So it's like... Um, well, off with the bad luck and in with the good, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think that's how it's supposed to be. So um, each team threw like a, a seemingly separate send-off party that somehow connects as one because of Shio's sponsored fireworks. 
I, I don't know how I need, I need a better catchphrase for that but anyway it turns out that he was the one who texted Kono and uh, Tokoha together at the same time uh, together at the same area so that he can encourage everyone involved with some Boom Shakalaka sponsored by Kiba Corporation <laughs> you know that sounded like a uh, like a shameless plug but unfortunately I'm not being endorsed by anything so how do the teams actually uh, hold that set of parties well Chrono's team took on the legendary spicy curry challenge to fill their bodies with fire before having a, a very fiery I mean a very friendly fight uh, Tokoha's team enjoys a relaxing day at the onsen just like they always do I guess and Shion's team flies in a helicopter and indulging in a luxurious lunch and a five star cruise I like that kind of life, because it's something I'll never get. <laughs> wow, that, that that's a that's a huge low blow to my current life status at the moment. Because hey, we are not rich. That's why we are doing YouTube. Nah, no, just kidding. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, because this is a filler episode, there really isn't much to talk about this, uh, other than the fact that in, in the introduction for U20, uh, U20, you see, <laughs> the Under-20 tournament uh, contains something unexpected. Um, first of all, Kamui is joining the tournament, uh, of course, with the team on his own, and the team members are none other than Nagisa and, get this, Sendo Emi. <laughs> wow, how he managed to get them to work together, I have no idea, but the three of them are pretty deadly as a team, but it kind of gets me a little curious curious because most of the team fights that we've seen so far um well the, the players are usually fighting uh, in very different teams uh, sorry different using different clans i would say and uh, as we all know by now kamui and nagisa both use uh, nova grappler so i'm not too sure whether nagisa would revert back to seven c's <laughs> seven c's oh gosh i mean grand blue <laughs> just before um she met kamui and decided to change to nova, Gra uh, nova grappler just so she can be with him but um whether whether she'll change to that or whatsoever we'll find out and of course emmy uses um bermuda triangle so yay we're gonna have another clan booster this year just for bermuda triangle which means more money to bushiro so we can buy all the waifus we've want <laughs> And another thing is that, uh, well, just before the episode ended, actually, we find out that the person Kazuma is trying to chase is Kazumi, you know, as in Onimaru Kazumi. Ooh, I totally did not see this coming. Bushiro is very, very subtle as usual. <laughs> that sounded so sarcastic. But we've already known that um, at, uh, Kazumi is the one that always trash Kaz uh, Kazuma at, before you grew up and stuff when he was young so it no they aren't very good in the subtle department I mean the, the silhouette itself we already know he's got white hair and a bit chopped up frank, uh, fringe here and there and the, even even making the decks black <laughs> isn't gonna help at all it's just so obvious <laughs> But hey, you know, it's it's an interesting episode to take a break from all the action that we had in the past few episodes. And uh, it's a good way to usher in the, the new year for Bushiroad at least, uh, and for all of us actually in fact, so that we can get prepared for more, um, well, more amazing fights that are to, about to come. So let's look forward to the next episode, shall we? <laughs> And one last thing before I move on is the fact that in the legendary spicy curry challenge, uh, what happened was that, you know, I mean, uh, as you all know, in restaurants and stuff, they have this like huge ramen challenge whatsoever, in that you have to finish the food within a limited time. Uh, if you do, you well, you basically eat that food for free. If not, you got to pay up for it. So in this case, uh, what, what really caught me off guard was the fact that um, the shop actually incorporated vanguard elements into the, the the curry challenge so what happened was you know there was a trigger chance uh by the chef so if you draw you draw a card from the deck and if you get a trigger then something will happen so in this case if you get a critical trigger the time limit will be doubled so you have more time to finish the the curry uh but if you draw a huge trigger then the time will be halved and you have a lot less time to do it and uh if i'm not wrong kazuma drew the draw trigger which allowed him to draw another card and add another um participant into the challenge so what happened was uh, well, in, uh, according to Tayo, the rule was that only two people can uh, participate in the challenge. And so <laughs> so Tayo actually voted himself out because he couldn't take the spiciness of the curry. So <laughs> you sly slay me. You actually got the two big brothers to do all the crap work for you. Very nice, very nice. Says a lot about you. <laughs> but, uh, well, 
Kazuma still managed to pull him in with a draw trigger and the three of them f- managed to finish it and win a ticket to the Ranger land, I think. It was some kind of a, uh, uh, an amusement park. So, <laughs> Chrono and Kazuma was just relaxing there and uh, Tayo riding on the carousel very happily. <laughs> so... <laughs> It was it was quite a funny um it was quite a funny episode if you ask me but it gets me really hyped up for what's coming next so let's let's see how the new episode plays out. Crossbone Radio Wave bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Next up is this section. What's that card? <laughs> you know that sounded really weird. But anyway, this is a section where I will describe a card in the most cryptic way possible and you guys are going to guess what card I am describing. Uh, So what's going to happen is that I will first pick a clan at random and then um, pick a card from the clan again at random, um, which I've already done so prior to this show. So you guys, uh, I mean, so I will describe it in as... Uh, as cryptic a way as possible, but in a way that you guys can actually guess what the card is without too much trouble. And at the end of the show, I will announce the correct answer. So listen on if you want to know whether you're correct or not. If you guess it correctly, you'll get nothing. But if you guess it wrongly, you'll also get nothing. You'll lose nothing. <laughs> but more importantly, this is a, a, a fun interactive uh, experiment for, for all of us to, you know, increase our interactivity with you guys in a way that, you know, it makes it fun and engaging. So, uh, like I said, I really picked the clan. Um, so the clan I picked is Narukami. So Narukami is very known for things like uh, Tectonix, for example. <laughs> and of course the Brawler series, the Vanquishers, Eradicators and stuff. So the card I picked... Wow, how do I describe this? Um, let's see. Alright, first of all, of course starting with the, the grade. It's a grade 2 card. It's grade 2 Narukami. Um, Alright, so uh, I'm looking at a card right now and it's staring at me, it's telling me, get my descriptions right or I will chop your head off. <laughs> okay, so grade 2, um, his, he has a base power of 8000 and he's got one critical, as all, as all cards do. And he has a total of uh, two skills actually, two skills. And the art of the card, hmm, let's see, it's uh, <laughs> it's a slithering, slithering snake with uh, with two, I think it's two horns, four horns, with glowing blue eyes, and he's got very, very muscular hands and a very large upper body, and it's holding a, I would call this a naginata actually, it's a, it's a rod with blades on it, and the blade is charged with electricity. And is looking at you with with those intimidating eyes, ready to cut your head off anytime, anywhere. <laughs> uh, if I if I do mention which set this comes out, then uh, it will be too obvious already. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna give you some time to think about what uh, what it what this card is. And if you if you got it right, then hey. <laughs> so keep the answer to yourself, and we will find out what the answer is at the end of this show. So that is it for What's That Card? Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Card Trivia of the Day! This is the section where I talk about a certain card of my choice, or yours, and talk about it in as many details as possible, such as the skill it has, the artwork, its use in a deck, and of course, random trivia about the unit. So if you have any picks on what card you would like me to talk about, feel free to drop a comment on our social medias or send us an email, all of which will be mentioned at the end of the show. Since it's the first episode, uh, let's start with one of the cards from my favourite clan, Oracle Think Tank. <laughs> So this week, I'm going to be talking about the Susano series, but for this particular card, it's Supreme Battle Deity Susano. Just a quick recap, Susano has two skills. His first skill is a Generation Break 2 continuous skill, where he gets plus 5000 power and a critical if you have 4 more cards in your hand during your turn. His other skill, which is a strike skill, uh, lets you look at the top two cards of your deck, add one of them into your hand, and the other to the bottom of the deck, all for a simple cost of Counter Blast 1. 
As many of all, uh, as many of y'all would know by now, Oracle Think Tank had a lot of weird, if not bad, boost over the years. But I feel that this is one, uh, this one card is the saving grace for for the clan itself because of the extra power and critical, uh, which forces your opponent to think twice about whether they can afford to take two damage or not, or uh, consider whether to throw a, a, a perfect guard from the hand and lose one in the pro in the long run. So. <clears throat> Uh, it's used in a deck, it's quite, uh, it's really hard to say actually because the deck itself cannot fully function or cannot fully utilize its potential unless you have old cards uh, in the old, you know, much older sets like Silent Tom, uh, Weather Girl Milk and things like that that will actually potentially help boost your, your unit's uh, power as much as possible. So, the unit Susano himself uh, derives his name and design from the Shinto God of Seas and Storms of the same name. Uh, he's also known as Takehaya Susano no Mikoto and Kumano Ketsumiko no Kami at the Kuno, uh, Kumano Shrine. Oh, that was a mouthful. Uh, he's also the brother of Amaterasu, the Goddess of the Sun, and Tsukiyomi, the God of the Moon. And he's married to Kushinada Hime, which all of you should know is one of the perfect gods for Genesis. So Amaterasu, you know, as in CEO Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi, the right chain. So a lot of a lot of these cards actually have uh, a lot of cultural references as well as connections with one another, and they actually complement each other very very well. I feel, except for Kushinada Hime because she's from a different clan. But I digress. <laughs> So on the card art for Susano, he's seen holding a weapon, which I believe is called the Kusanagi no Tsurugi, which is also the critical uh, trigger for Susano, you know, as in Kusanagi for short. But this is where it gets confusing, because Kusanagi is actually the more popular name that replaced his original name, which is Ame no Murakumo no Tsurugi, which is the strike father and the Susano searcher for Oracle Think Tank. You know, Ame no Murakumo, the blue color card. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm nerding myself out as well with all the heavy cultural references. And uh, but if you're still with me, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> so Susano found the Ame no Murakumo no Tsurugi in the tale of Yamata no Orochi when he was slaying it. You know the the, the so-called Hydra, the eight uh, eight headed snake, uh, which he achieved by offering eight tubs of sake to intoxicate it and then chopping it up to pieces. Believe it or not, the sake is also included in as part of the card design for Susano. Crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, if you can see him holding, uh, holding the the kusanagi in one hand, and the other hand, he's actually holding like a chain of uh, gods, uh, which contain the sake inside. So that is that's really really uh, interesting, if you ask me, because that a lot of cards uh, in the Oracle Think Tank, especially, have all these kind of cultural references. So I feel that you know. As a Japanese uh, enthusiast myself, uh, cultural enthusiast myself, I feel that you know th th this is the kind of thing for me, <laughs> or something like that. So, uh, well, believe it or not, that's actually not all, because before Susano set out to slay Yamata no Orochi, he transformed his 2B wife at the time, Kushinada Hime, into a comb, which he wore on his hair so she can be with him when he was slaying it, or something like that. But uh, if you look at the design for Susano, the card itself, the ornament on his head, uh, in a, it's actually very similar to a comb, which leads me to believe that that is Kushinada Hime in comb form in the card design. Wow! <laughs> Just one single card can encompass every single, you know, as much design uh, elements and cultural references as possible. So, uh, props to uh, Hagia Karoru for making the design so amazing. And uh, well, that's not all for Susano. Uh, the card itself is done actually, but for Susano series, especially the new Susano that is coming out in the upcoming uh, character booster, which is We Are Trinity Dragon. Uh, the new Susano actually has a skill whereby if you know it does something, if your G zone has a face up Amaterasu or Wakahirume, which is amazing because uh, F, uh, well. Amaterasu, as we all know, is the brother. Uh, is sorry, is the sister of Susano. But Wakahirume, uh, at first it might sound a little random. Is like why, why Wakahirume of all things? But if you actually read up the history, uh, well, the the law of Susano and Amaterasu, you actually realize that Wakahirume is uh, is a sister of Amaterasu, and I guess indirectly the the, the sister of uh, of Susano as well. But not just that. Um, when when Amaterasu and Susano actually had, uh, well, had a fight, I guess. Um, Susano threw a, a skinned pony and actually killed one of uh, Amaterasu's attendants, and that attendant happened to be Wakahirume. 
So who is Waka Hirome? Well, Waka Hirome is actually the uh, one of the most uh, loyal, I guess, attendants for Amaterasu, and she's also the best in uh, in weaving and something like that. I think I can't really exactly remember, but it's something like that. And she is seen most of the time in a hall uh, in Amaterasu's hall, weaving and weaving and weaving. So, wow, that's very very interesting actually, and uh, it, it strengthens. Uh, in, in a spiritual sense, I guess, the whole deck itself. So now that Amaterasu is a G Guardian and Wakaru Hirume was the GR for Fighters Collection uh, 2016, I guess these are considered the staples in Oracle Think Tank deck already. But hey, if you have any other ways to build the deck, you know, hey, um, <laughs> good for you! <laughs> So, okay, before I nerd myself out from even more cultural references, uh, <laughs> I think I should leave it at that. So let me know what card you'd like me to talk about next. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Crossbone Information! This is where we bring you news about upcoming releases, local events, and insights about Crossbone Vanguards and Cardfight Vanguard. G Character Booster 2 We Are Trinity Dragon will be released in Japanese format on a January 13th Saturday and includes further support for Oracle Think Tank, Dimension Police, and Great Nature. And in the English format, Revival Collection is now on sale. This set boosts all the clans with cards that are either very hard to find or never printed in English before, so be sure to get these boosters and strengthen your decks. The anime Cut Fight Vanguard G next airs at Cut Fight Vanguard's official YouTube channel every Sunday at 10 a.m. At the same time, tune in to Crossbone Vanguard's YouTube channel for a new Cut Fight every Thursday at 6 p.m. That is all for Crossbone information. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Cut Fight Vanguard. This marks the end of our first episode of Crossbone Radio Wave. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I had doing it. <laughs> so like I mentioned earlier in the early part of the show, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a very very long time. So I really thank you guys for making this possible for me and for us. And of course on behalf of Crossbone Vanguards, I thank you all, every single one of you, for making every single content that we've been, uh, we've been churning out worth the effort. So thank you all very much for that. <laughs> so. Have you figured out what the card for what's that card is already? Because if you haven't, then the answer is... <laughs> it's actually very obvious. The answer is Demonic Dragon Berserker Chatura. <laughs> I told you the answer is so obvious. With a base power of 8000 and critical of 1, he has two continuous skills. The first skill is that this unit cannot attack a rear guard from the rear guard circle. And the, the second continuous skill is during a turn, this unit gets plus 3000 power and the auto rear guard skill. Counter blast 1, when this unit hit, uh, when this unit attack hits a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card, choose a card from your opponent's drop zone and bind it face up. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I really can't think of much card to choose. Uh, it, I mean, it's that, that I'm really familiar with, so I guess it's a good start for Chargera because everyone hates that card. No, just kidding, I, I like that card myself. <laughs> Okay, but I digress. So, uh, just want to let you know that we also accept fan mails and we'll be waiting for them. So if you have one, do send it to our email at crossbone.vanguards uh, at gmail.com. That's C-R-O-S-S-B-O-N-E dot V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D-S at gmail.com. Once again, that's crossbonevanguards at gmail.com. C-R-O-S-S-B-O-N-E dot V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D-S at gmail.com Of course, if you have any questions you'd like to ask us, feel free to send them to us as well and we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. Of course, you can also send them to us at our socials uh, in, in forms of comment. So we're on Twitter at CrossboneVGS, Facebook at Crossbone Vanguards, and not to mention follow us on our blog at CrossboneVanguards.com where we post deck profiles, event coverages, and other things that we can post on our YouTube channel such as news, upcoming releases, and so on and so forth. That's it, thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again in the next episode. Tang Endo! Good night!
Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. This program has been brought to you by Crossbone Vanguards.